everybody. Today I thought I would do an in install of Debian's Unstable branch, uh, mainly because a lot of Linux users that are not familiar with Debian, you know, they know that Debian has three branches, stable, testing, and unstable. But when you go to download, you know, a Debian ISO, uh, why is it that you always end up with Debian Stable? I mean, that's really their product. That's what Debian's known for. Debian is known for being a stable Linux distro. That's how it, it's made its name. That's why Debian is very popular uh, when it comes to servers. Uh, Debian Unstable, you know, is somewhat popular among Linux enthusiasts, but that's not really Debian. You know, Debian Stable branch is where it's at in the Debian world. How do you go about setting up an install, though, of Debian Unstable? I review a lot of distros based on Debian Unstable. How do you get there? Well, you get there one of three ways, really. According to uh, the wiki here from Debian.org, to install Debian Unstable, you either have to in install Debian Stable and then, you know, change your apt sources list, uh, you know, your mirrors, point them to the unstable mirrors rather than the stable mirrors and then do an update and a dist upgrade or you can be a tester of the testing installer and, and install testing and then do the same thing you know point your mirrors to unstable do an update and an upgrade or you can download what Debian calls their mini ISO image you find their mini ISO image under their Debian mirrors page it's, it's kind of deeply hidden too in the Debian mirrors page. You go to the Debian mirrors list here. You pick some country of origin, you know, the closest one, you know. So I'm in the US. I would pick US here. Then I go to distributions, D I S T S. And then from this list, I choose unstable. From this list, I choose main. From this list, I choose installer AMD64. From this list, I choose current. From this list, I choose images. From this list, I choose netboot. And then under that, I find the mini.iso. So, eh, kind of hidden there, but you get the mini.iso from Debian's page here. And then from there, we have an option to you know, set up Debian Unstable. So, I'm going to install this inside VirtualBox. All right, so we've downloaded the ISO. We've booted into it, and we have the options of install advanced options or help. Now if I click install we're going to go through the standard Debian installer, the text-based installer. Uh, that's going to install Debian stable. I mean that's what a Debian installer does. Is it installs Debian stable. Uh, so I need to go to advanced options here. Advanced options I'm going to go to expert install. Alright now here choose the next step in the install process choose language so we need to choose our language English has been chosen for us that's correct alright country territory area United States has been chosen that's correct choose the base default locale settings United States English US yeah that's correct additional locales I don't need to do anything here I don't need to install a, an additional locale uh, the United States is fine by itself. All right, access software for a blind person using a Braille display. A display. I don't need to do that. No, uh, no one with a disability is going to be using my machine. Configure the keyboard. Yeah, let's go ahead and set that up. By default, it's already chosen American English. That's correct. All right, detect network hardware. You need to do that. All right, modules to load, USB storage. Yeah, we need to definitely install that. Configure the network. Hit enter. Auto configure networking. Yes, I'm just going to let it do its thing. All right. And it's attempting IPv6 auto configuration. So it's doing all the network setup. All right, host name. It's chosen Debian for the host name by default. That's fine. Domain name, I really don't need to enter a domain name. All right, choose a mirror of the Debian archive. All right, 
protocol for file downloads, HTTP, HTTPS, or FTP. I'm fine with just standard HTTP. Debian Archive Mirror Country. I'm in the United States. It's already chosen that for me. Debian Archive Mirror. It has already chosen ftp.us.debian.org for me, so I'm going to hit enter. Proxy information. I, I don't need to do anything there. All right, now Debian version to install. This is where this differs from a standard Debian install. It actually is asking us do we want to install Stretch, which is the stable branch, Buster, which is the testing branch, or SID, the unstable branch. Obviously, I'm going to choose SID for the unstable branch. All right, next, download installer components. Hit enter. All right, now we can choose from this list different things we want to install. All right, so I chose a, a few options from the list. Uh, I chose some uh, sound setup. I think I chose for it to install the open SSH, you know, the secure shell. And a few options from that, that rather large list of components to install by default. A lot of them were server related, which I didn't need. Anyway, it's going to take a couple of minutes to install some of these components I told it to. All right, we need to set up users and passwords. So, all right, enable shadow passwords. Shadow passwords make your system more secure because nobody is able to view even encrypted passwords. Enable shadow passwords. I'm not going to bother doing that on this. All right, if you choose not to allow root to log in, then a user account will be created and given the power to become root using this sudo command. So do you allow login as root? You know what, no, I'll just use sudo. All right, a user account will be created for you to use instead of the root account. For non-administrative activities, please enter the real name of the user. I'm just gonna choose Debian even though that's not my real name of course username for the account I'm gonna choose Debian a good password alright choose a password for the new user alright oh I accidentally went back okay now retype our password alright we need to configure our clock set the clock using NTP sure why not NTP server to use, yeah, okay. So time zone, I'm in the central time zone in the US. Detecting disk, now here is where we set up our partitions. Partition disk. Okay, load additional components. Starting up the partitioner, okay, partitioning. We have the options of using guided partitioning, letting Debian just set it up for us, or manual partitioning, creating our own partitions and sizes. Debian by default, I know, is going to create a swap file, and it's going to create a very large swap uh, partition for me, which is bad on this virtual machine. I only created a 16 gig virtual machine, and I know Debian is going to try to create a 6 gig swap partition, a monstrous swap partition for such a small hard drive so I'm going to go to manual partitioning I'm just going to go ahead and do manual partitioning so I'm going to go down here alright and I'd already set up a 16 gig partition I've already made it bootable so I'm actually done setting up the partition I'm not going to create a swap so finish partitioning right changes to the disk alright no root file system is defined please correct this so I need to go back I need to make sure that this is the root file system so use as extended for okay that's fine format the partition yes we need to format it mount point none has been chosen I actually need to make this the root file system alright bootable flag is on okay I think it's correct now let me finish partitioning right changes to the disk yeah now it's working alright Debian is warning me that I didn't create a swap partition. Do I want to go back to the partitioning menu? You know, to create a swap partition. No, I don't. All right, write changes to the disk, yes or no. I'm gonna choose yes. It's gonna format the hard drive right to the disk. Install the base system, click enter, and away we go. I'll pause the video for a few minutes. All right, so let's run through that little bit of installer. Now it's asking what kernel to install, and we have various options here. 
I'm just going to go with what it's chosen by default, Linux-Image-AMD64. Now it's continuing to install the base system. All right, drivers to include. All right, we have the options of generic, include all available drivers, or targeted, only include drivers needed for this system. I'm just going to go ahead and install all available drivers. The targeted one would be useful, you know, if you want to pick and choose the drivers you actually need so you don't have, you know, some extra stuff, you know, installed on your machine, but, you know. Hard drive space, while this is a virtual machine, hard drive space is kind of at a premium. You know, some extra drivers are not going to, you know, fill up the drive, so. And I'll pause the video for a couple more minutes, still running through the install. Alright, back to the main menu now. Configuring our package manager. Of course, Debian uses the apt package manager, APT, apt. Some non-free software has been made to work with Debian. This software is not part of Debian. Uh, the software has various licensing which may prevent us from using, modifying, sharing it. Please choose whether you want to have it available in you anyway. So yes or no. I'm going to choose yes. I want to use non-free software. Alright, enable source repositories in apt. Yes, obviously you need to enable your repos otherwise your package manager is not going to do anything for you. Alright. The installer failed to access the mirror. This may be a problem with your network or with the mirror. You can try you can choose to retry the download, select a different mirror, ignore the problem, continue continue without all the packages from this mirror. Okay, so whatever it tried to download and install just a second ago, it failed. So now it's asking us do we want to retry? Do we want to change the mirror or do we just want to ignore it? Ignoring it is not an option. So I either choose to retry, retry or change mirror. I'm going to retry. Maybe it'll work this time. So it's trying to configure the apt package manager. The first time it tried it, it failed. So let's see. I think it, it, it worked fine that time. So all right, select and install software. OK, it looks like it's going to run an upgrade. This may take a minute. I'll pause the video. All right, it's asking about VirtualBox guest editions. Do I want to install them? It's already ticked on by default. That's great. I actually do want to install them, so that's perfect. All right, applying updates on a frequent basis is an important part of keeping your system secure. So it's asking us updates management on this system. Do we want to do automatic updates or install security updates automatically? I'm going to not do any automatic updates. You know, I update the system when I feel like updating the system. I don't want it, you know, updating without my permission. All right. The system may anonym, uh, anonymously supply the distribution developers with statistics about yada yada yada. Do I want to participate in that package usage survey? No. Basically, it's asking, do, am, am I okay with the system sending information back to, you know, Debian developers? I'm not going to bother doing that. Not on this virtual machine. All right, choosing software to install. By default, you know, we're doing a minimal install, so it's asking us, hey, do you want a desktop with this? Would you like, you know, a desktop environment installed? So you really need to choose something here unless you're comfortable with the command line later and, you know, want to install a desktop or a window manager through the command line. Our options here are GNOME, XFCE, KDE, Cinnamon, Monte, LXDE, or LXQT, or doing a web server, print server, SSH server. So, you know what? For Debian Unstable, I'm going to choose the LXQT desktop environment. I'm really digging what LXQT is doing these days. Alright, now it's installing 1436 packages so this may take a few minutes I'll pause the video and it's been running for a few minutes you know downloading you know 1400 and something packages you know, even with a fast package manager like Debian's app package manager takes a while so I went and got dinner I got my bag of sour cream and onion lays and I poured me a glass of wine Pinot Noir Alright, so 
that is finished. Now we need to install the Grub bootloader on a hard disk. So, okay, I hit enter. Okay, it's taking a minute. Okay, it looks like it's installing the Grub bootloader. They didn't ask me where to install it. Okay, there it goes. Install the Grub bootloader to the master boot record, yes or no. Obviously, you need to choose yes here. All right, device for bootloader installation. Slash dev slash SDA is where I need to install it. All right, do we want to force Grub installation to the EFI removable media path? Hmm. Yeah, you know what, I'm going to choose yes for this. All right, installing Grub bootloader. It's running update Grub. All right, finish the installation. So it's finishing the installation. I'm not exactly sure what it's running here. All right, looks like it's got to set the system clock to UTC, yes. All right, installation complete. So it is time to boot into your new system. Make sure to remove the installation media, remove the ISO, so that you can boot into your new system rather than restarting the installation. So let me reboot the machine. I'll be right back. All right, and we're rebooting into our freshly installed Debian Unstable SID. And we told it to install the LXQD desktop environment for us. And here we are at our login manager. All right, type in my password and we log into our LXQT desktop environment. And I'm not going to bother reviewing, you know, the LXQT desktop environment here inside Debian Unstable. Uh, it does come with a, a suite of programs. I mean, it's it's not just, you know, LXQT and nothing installed. It, it, it has quite a, quite a bit of software installed by default. But really, the purpose of this video was not to review LXQT inside Debian. It was to run you through how to get Debian Unstable installed on your machine. And again, we could have installed any desktop environment we wanted to on this. It had the option of installing the GNOME desktop environment, KDE, XFCE, Cinnamon, LXDE, and of course LXQT. Or you could have chosen not to install any desktop environment at all, such if, if you wanted to go with something really minimal, say window managers like Openbox, Fluxbox, Xmonad, i3. Uh, you could have gone that route. Of course, that would be a little bit more involved, you know, setting up. But anyway, Debian Unstable. Check it out, guys. Peace.